Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Dubain County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 31, hosted by SSCL librarian, Linda Reimer. This video cast is being recorded on Friday, November 27th, 2020. Jumping in with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times, as usual. At number one, Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series. Technological discoveries and an ensuing arms race change how a war is fought. At number two, Daylight by David Baldacci. The FBI agent Adelie Pine's search for her twin sister overlaps with a military investigator's hunt for someone involved in a global conspiracy. At number three, Home Body by Rupi Kaur. Poems and illustrations by the author of Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers. At number four, The Law of Innocence by Michael Connolly, the sixth book in the Mickey Holler series. Holler defends himself when police find the body of a former client in the trunk of his car. And at number five, A Time for Mercy by John Grisham, the third book in the Jake Brigand series. A 16-year-old is accused of killing a deputy in Clanton, Mississippi, back in 1990. And on to our top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. At number one, A Promised Land by Barack Obama. In the first volume of his presidential memoirs, Barack Obama offers personal reflections on his formative years and pivotal moments through his first term. At number two, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. The Academy Award-winning actor shares snippets from the diaries he kept over the last 35 years. At number three, Dolly Parton, Song Teller by Dolly Parton with Robert K. Orman. The country music icon offers insights on 175 of her songs. At number four, No Time Like the Future by Michael J. Fox. The actor discusses the challenges he has faced with Parkinson's disease and other setbacks that caused him to reassess his outlook. And at number five, Frontier Follies by Reed Drummond. The host of the Food Network show, The Pioneer Woman, shares stories on motherhood and marriage. And I have to just note before we move on, that's kind of neat that the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week are in the biography and memoir category. Apparently, Americans are interested in reading about life's stories at the moment. That's cool. I've always liked biographies and memoirs myself. Our first recommended read of the week is the new David Baldacci novel, Daylight. FBI agent Adelie Pine's search for her sister Mercy clashes with military investigator John Puller's high stakes case, leading them both deep into a global conspiracy from which neither of them will escape unscathed. For many long years, Adelie Pine was tormented by uncertainty after her twin sister, Mercy, was abducted at the age of six and never seen again. Now, just as Adelie is pressured to end her investigation into Mercy's disappearance, she finally gets her most promising breakthrough yet. The identity of her sister's kidnapper, Ito Vincenzo. 
With time running out, Adelie and her assistant Carol Bloom raced to Vincenzo's last known location in Trenton, New Jersey, and unknowingly stumble straight into John Puller's case, blowing his arrest during a drug ring investigation involving a military installation. Stunningly, Pine and Puller's joint investigation uncovers a connection between Vincenzo's family and a breathtaking scheme that strikes at the very heart of global democracy. Peeling back the layers of deceit, lies, and cover-ups, Adelie finally discovers the truth about what happened to Mercy. And that truth will shock Pine to her very core. And that exciting title is our first recommended read of the week. Our second recommended read of the week is also a mystery. It's the new Ian Rankin novel, A Song for the Dark Times. Edgar winner Rankin's excellent 23rd outing for John Rivas takes the retired police inspector from Edinburgh to a remote part of northern Scotland, where his daughter Samantha's partner, Keith Grant, the father of his school-age granddaughter, has vanished. In his search for Keith, Rebus visits a local commune and, of particular interest to Keith, the ruins of a camp built during World War II that held captured German soldiers. An entitled landowner he runs across complicates his quest. Back in Edinburgh, former colleague Siobhan Clark investigates the murder of Salman Bed Mahmud, a wealthy 23-year-old Saudi. The high-profile case draws in such familiar characters as criminal Morris Gerald Cafferty and Malcolm Fox, the smarmy, ambitious detective introduced in 2009's The Complaints. As the two plots converge, the various credible, complex backstories coalesce into a highly satisfying and unified whole. This fresh entry boasts the kind of storytelling that made Rankin famous. Our first audiobook recommendation of the week is a neat magical realism yarn. It's called Before the Coffee Gets Cold and it's by an author whose name I can't quite pronounce. I did do some searching online. Apologies to the author for not getting it quite right, but it's simply close to Tuzukazu Kawaguchi, or I hope that's close. Having said that, on to the book itself. Japanese playwright Kawaguchi's evocative English language debut is set in a tiny Tokyo cafe where time travel is possible. In four connected tales, lovers and family members take turns sitting in the chair that allows a person to travel back in time, but only for as long as it takes a single cup of coffee to cool. In Husband and Wife, a nurse goes back in time to visit her husband before his Alzheimer's erased her from his memory. In The Sisters, a woman visits her younger sister, who died in an accident while trying to visit her, to apologize for not seeing her. Kawaguchi's characters embark on lo-fi emotional journeys, unburdened by the technicalities often found in time travel fiction. Notably, they are unable to change the present. The characters learn, though, that even though people don't return to a changed present, they return with a changed heart. Kawaguchi's tender look at the beauty of passing things, adapted from one of his plays, makes for an affecting, deeply immersive journey into the desire to hold on to the past. This wondrous tale will move readers. 
and that is the Publisher's Weekly Review. And this particular audiobook is available for instant checkout through the Hoopla catalog. Our second audiobook recommendation of the week is nonfiction and a current New York Times bestseller. It's called First Principles, What America's Founders Learned from the Greeks and Romans and How That Shaped Our Country, written by Thomas Ricks and read by James Lurie. Pulitzer Prize winner Ricks delivers an immersive and enlightening look at how the classical educations of the first four U.S. presidents, namely George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison, influenced their thinking and the shape of American democracy. According to Ricks, the evolution of Washington's military strategy during the Revolutionary War drew from Roman General Fabius's defeat of Hannibal in 203 BCE. Ricks also documents classical antecedents in the construction of the Constitution and Thomas Jefferson's architectural plans for government buildings in Washington, D.C. Additionally, he analyzes 18th century opinions on the ancient world, expressed in Robert Dodsley's textbook, The Preceptor, A Blueprint for the Declaration of Independence, and Joseph Addison's play Cato, which inspired Patrick Henry's famous line, Give me liberty or give me death. The Amphictyonic League, a confederation of early Greek cities, is partially responsible for the U.S. Senate's equalized representation regardless of state size, Ricks points out. The book closes with suggested steps for returning America to the course intended by the revolutionary generation, including don't panic, refocus on the public good, and wake up Congress. With incisive selections from primary sources and astute cultural and political analysis, this lucid and entertaining account is a valuable take on American history. And I definitely want to read that one. Generally, I read as compared to listen to audiobooks, but the audiobook is too getting a good review. Moving on to our streaming video recommendations of the week. This week, I've actually got five quick recommendations, and I decided on the number five just because this is a long week and a long weekend for a lot of people who are homebound and possibly alone or with fewer people in their family circle than usual. And I thought a couple of extra streaming recommendations might just fit the bill. So here we go. The first one is Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. It's a 2020 release available through Netflix. First, there was Dolly Parton's Heartstrings. Now there's Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square a new holiday movie featuring 14 original songs from the legendary country singer. The drama centers on a rich woman named Regina who returns to her small hometown with the goal of selling her land to developers. However, Regina will first have to go through the eclectic group of townspeople as well as an angel played by Parton all of whom gather together to teach her the real meaning of community and love just in time for Christmas. So if you're looking for a feel-good movie, this is one. Our second streaming recommendation is a fun one. It's called A Swinging Sesame Street Celebration, and it's from this year. It's available through PBS Passport. Enjoy a celebration of the music of Sesame Street with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Big Bird, Elmo, and other Sesame Street favorites sing the show's songs alongside the world-renowned orchestra and artistic director, Wynton Marsalis, and a fun time is guaranteed. 
not to mention a time that sounds great. So again, that's a swinging Sesame Street celebration. Our third streaming recommendation is Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey, a new film from Netflix. More than two years after Netflix first purchased rights to Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey, the holiday musical is finally hitting the small screen. The family-friendly musical centers on a legendary toy maker, Jeronicus Jangle, who has a knack for making whimsical inventions. Jeronicus's holiday plans quickly go awry when his apprentice steals his most prized toy, prompting his granddaughter to set out to save the day with an invention of her own. Another upbeat film. And moving on to our fourth streaming recommendation for this week, and this one has nothing to do with the holidays, in case there's someone out there who would like to watch something that has nothing to do with the holidays. It's historical, though. It's called The Liberator. It came out this year from Netflix, and it is an animated TV series, although it is not for kids, it's for adults. So having said that, let me tell you about the plot. In this animated story, based on real events from World War II, a U.S. Army infantry team with disparate demographic backgrounds fights together through Europe over 500 days. The series centers around a captain who sustains a battle injury but returns to the battle campaign to lead his men. The team fights in many of the most horrific battles during the war and ultimately liberates a concentration camp. So if you're in the mood for historical fiction based on fact, this would be a good one to check out. Our fourth streaming recommendation is another fun one. It's called The Pack. It's new. It's from Amazon Prime Video and it's about dogs, which is always cool. In this global adventure, 12 teams of dogs, and of course their human companions, compete in fun and exciting challenges, celebrating their incredible bond. At stake is a life-changing $750,000 for the winning duo and their charity. $500,000 to the winners, plus an additional $250,000 prize amount for the animal charity of their choice. The pack is hosted by gold medalist skier Lizzie Vaughn and her dog Lucy. Check out this Feel Good Amazon Prime original competition series. Well, that's a mouthful. And it says at the end of the month, but it's available now. So if you like dogs, check out the pack. It should be fun. Our fifth and final streaming recommendation for this week is a new movie from Amazon Prime Video. It's called Uncle Frank. In 1973, when Frank Bledsoe and his 18-year-old niece Beth take a road trip from Manhattan to Creekville, South Carolina for the family patriarch's funeral, they are unexpectedly joined by Frank's lover, Valid. Watch this incredible drama film exclusively on Amazon Prime Video. And the plot description is from the decider, of course. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week. This week, our format is a downloadable audiobook. It's the new version of Death on the Nile, the Agatha Christie classic. This particular audiobook has been re recorded in 2020 to complement the movie that is out now, of the same title, of course, Death on the Nile. And this audiobook is narrated by John Moffat and the great actor Kenneth Branagh. So here's the plot. Beloved detective Herculo Perot embarks on a journey to Egypt in one of Agatha Christie's most famous mysteries, Death on the Nile. The tranquility of a cruise along the Nile was shattered by the discovery that Lynette Ridgway had been shot through the head. She was young, stylish, and beautiful. A girl who had everything 
until she lost her life. Perot recalled an earlier outburst by a fellow passenger who said, I'd like to put my dear little pistol against her head and just press the trigger. Yet in this exotic setting, nothing is ever quite what it seems. So if you're looking for an engrossing mystery, check out Death on the Nile. And on to our Odd Duck recommendations of the week. So I have two recommendations this week, and the first is to go to the YouTube website and do a couple of searches for fun videos. I've got eight different suggestions. You can, of course, find all kinds of content on YouTube. I do like to note when talking about YouTube that for educational purposes, not necessarily the best place to go. For entertainment purposes, absolutely. But with YouTube, everything on there is what they call user-generated content. So it's either things that people have created themselves, there are not, lots of people that have their own YouTube channels, or things that they've put together or uploaded, could be TV episodes. Like if you look really closely there at the YouTube photo on the left, you'll see that's Carol O'Connor as Archie Bunker. Anyway, the, the point is for factual information, you might want to go to another news source or factual information source. But for entertainment purposes, there's lots of great content on YouTube. And the Hoopla Digital Catalog has some really neat holiday collections. So I'm going to show you those. But first, I'm going to show you my eight suggested YouTube searches for this time of the year. Fireplace, Yule Log, Christmas Choir, Muppet Family Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and two searches that have nothing to do with the holidays at all, but are offer relaxing videos, Ocean Waves and Coffee Shop. So here we are on the Hoopla website. And of course, there's an app for smart TVs and also for mobile devices if you want to do it that way. But anyway, we're at YouTube.com. And I'm going to quickly show you the eight searches I recommend. Fireplace is the first one. And I use Fireplace first instead of Yule Log because if you're not a Christian or, you know, you're not into holiday stuff, you might enjoy a roaring fire without a bunch of holiday music. And even if you are someone who celebrates Christmas, you might not want holiday music blaring through your TV while you're listening to a fire. You might just want the relaxing sounds of the fire crackling in the background. So 12 hours of relaxing fireplace sounds, absolutely no music. And then there are other ones like cozy cabin ambience, rain and fireplace sounds. That's more for sleeping and relaxation. Well, they're all sort of for relaxation. Some of these do have holiday music, but if you type in Yule log, because of course that's a traditional Christmas type search, you're going to get things like a very happy Yule log. This one's got... There, go along. Most of them have ads <laughs> before they actually get to... Go along, get it? Oh, always falls for it. I know. And then... After... So we got to wait just a minute to get to a very happy Yule log. Yeah, you see, there's Handel with a cute dog and cat in the foreground. But you get the idea. So... Well, doing research for this particular video cast, I came across something I haven't seen in years, the Muppet Family Christmas. And yes, the entire 40 odd minute Muppet Family Christmas from 1987 is available on YouTube. Might be a good one to watch. If you're interested in holiday music, you might type in Christmas Choir, if you can spell. There we go. And you will come up with results like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, the Choir of St. John's College, Cambridge. So if you want to hear some Christmas carols, you could also type in Christmas carols and that would do it. Now that assumes, of course, if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, or if you don't do holidays at all. I have a couple of suggestions for that too. Give me just a second here. See if I can spell Hanukkah, because there are indeed some videos on YouTube about Hanukkah. These are more, there's a couple of things, Adam Sandler is always funny, of course, but there, these are more instructional and, you know, the story of. But 
they are there and it's neat to notice that they are there and kwanzaa oops again i can't spell sorry kwanzaa again a bunch of videos now if you're if you're going to show any of these to kids i would watch it first it's all user most of it's user generated content some clips from tv shows like sesame street but just give it a watch first to make sure it jibes with the facts i mean sesame street would be okay so those are the holiday ones now for just plain relaxation ocean waves always always a good thing and some of these are really long like 11 hours some of them also have little logos that pop up on the screen see that right there i don't on the bottom of that little screen on the first photo there i don't really care for that i like to get one without all that so this third one i've had that up on my tv it's just ocean waves at night you'll notice if i get into it here it's eight hours very relaxing and another thing that i found that is really cool something i discovered recently is again i can't spell it's coffee shop because so many of us are at home right now we're not really going out to coffee shops i enjoy going to a coffee shop and reading and you know chatting with people a little bit kind of fun so there are a bunch of different coffee shop videos i'm going to pick this first one because i know there's no ads on this one and this is what a lot of people like it's just kind of a relaxing thing it's the autumn we're in a coffee shop ads is playing for YouTube now I'm gonna to go to Hoopla this is hooplaDigital.com you can also download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or smart TV I should note right here because I don't think I've mentioned it so far today that you have to have a Corning library card to use Hoopla so your library card has to start out 10014 if you don't have one you can get one at the Southeast Dubai County Library the default thing that pops up here is audiobooks and there we go holiday romance so I'm going to click on that. You see, look at all these titles. Holiday audiobook titles available for instant checkout now. And they have holiday collections for each of their formats. So if we go to browse and then click on, say, movies. And I can see the edge of one on the carousel there, best of holiday. So you click that. And then we have 62 different holiday titles. Again, all available for instant checkout. You can check out four items from the Hoopla catalog per month per library card. And then let me see, let's go to music because that also will give you some holiday titles. And on the carousel view here, I know I saw one, there's Country Christmas. There's other music, of course, too, that's holiday related. But if you want some Country Christmas albums available for instant checkout now, there you go. And that's our Odd Duck of the Week. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. Send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. Just a reminder, the library has reopened at our home building located at 300 Civic Center Plaza in Corning, New York. Our current hours are Mondays and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Currently, we are closed on Wednesdays and Sundays. And that is the end of the new Library Connections content for this week. What follows are a few informational tidbits. The tidbits include directions as to how to access the library's website, catalogs, blogs, and social media pages, links to articles used to create this week's video, otherwise known as references, and the library's contact information. On your screen now, you see the library's website, appointments page, and StarCat. I'm going to talk about each briefly in turn, starting with the top left-hand corner and going clockwise. 
So on the top left hand corner, you see the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. You can find out a whole host of information about the library, materials, programs, and services by going to the library's website. In the top right hand corner, we see the schedule and appointment page. You can schedule an appointment for curbside pickup and for computer usage. Now you might think, why would you want to do that if the library is open? Well, curbside appointment, since we're now back in our home building, means exactly that. If you drive up in front of the library on the Tioga Avenue side of the building and you have a curbside appointment, a staff member will bring your books out to your car. You do not even have to get out of your car. So that's something you might want to do. You can also come into the library, of course. And scheduling an appointment to use a computer is a good idea if you have something you really have to do because right now, due to social distancing, we only have five computers with a sixth one that should be up and running shortly. So six computers for everybody to use means that if somebody's there when you come in and you haven't made an appointment, you might have to wait. Whereas if you make an appointment, then you're gonna have a computer for the time you desire. So just a thought. So you find the schedule appointment page at ssclibrary.org forward slash making hyphen appointments. And on the bottom of your screen, you see StarCat, found at starcat.stls.org. That is the catalog of physical library materials, print books, DVDs, music CDs, etc. With your library card in hand, you can go to StarCat and request books and materials log into your account, see what you have checked out, renew things, all sorts of things. So check out StarCat. The digital catalog with its companion apps Libby and Overdrive is the place to go to check out ebooks and downloadable audiobooks. Now these are what they call one copy, one user titles. Everything in the catalog is the digital catalog. And what that means is it's like print books in the library. If we have one copy of the new James Patterson book and it's checked out, then you would have to place a request for it and get it when it comes back. You couldn't immediately check it out. Unlike with digital content where you do actually have, we have the ability now, our technology is there to make multiple copies of say Heather Graham's Deadly Touch and have everybody check it out at once. But due to publisher restrictions, it's one copy, one user. So that book can be checked out by one patron at a time. So the digital catalog web page will allow you to check out materials to a computer if you so desire. You can also check out materials and send them to a Kindle e-reader. If you have a different kind of e-reader, you'll want to call the library for instructions. But the Kindle series of e-readers, it's relatively simple. You click on whatever book cover you're interested in, say the end of her there on the top shelf of the digital catalog. And then when you go to the next screen, you'll click borrow and it will say which, you know, which way do you want to borrow it? And one of the options is Kindle. Having said that, on the right side of your screen, you see the Libby app and the OverDrive app. And you might wonder, well, what's the difference? Well, Libby is for newer devices. Overdrive is for older devices and Kindle tablets. So if you have a Kindle HD tablet or a Kindle Fire tablet, use the Overdrive app. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for Southeast Dominion County library card holders for instant checkout, which means just what it sounds like. If you see it in the Hoopla catalog, you can check it out right now. Now you do have a limit of four items per month because although we'd like to offer unlimited access, the library has to pay for each item a patron checks out of the Hoopla catalog. And you can check out items through a web browser at hooplidigital.com or through the Hoopla app for mobile devices and smart TVs. Library blogs, full of fun content, and indeed they are. We have five library-related blogs. The Book Club for Adults, which is basically just adults as compared to young adults or kids. 
not to get too racy, it's just for people over, say, the age of 18. The Corning NY History Blog, which is our local history blog. Creation Stationery, the Makerspace Blog. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. And Tech and Book Talk, which is kind of a combination readers and viewers advisory blog with a few helpful tech tips thrown in. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic or want to make an appointment for curbside pickup, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number has remained the same for many, many years. So if you have an old phone book, you'll find this number in the phone book. It's area code 607-936-3713. And of course, if you Google Corning, New York and Library, and come up with Southeast Dubin County Library, you will also find this phone number. Social media. Just a weekly reminder, you can connect with the library, read library news, and post questions to the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. In relation, each video in this series is available on demand via the library's YouTube channel after it has first been shown on Facebook Live. And here's our references page for this week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great weekend.